The Redmi Note series remains popular for Xiaomi, introducing two new models this year. While there are actually three, we'll focus on two now. The Redmi Note 13 Pro with 5G and the Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus also with 5G. Despite similar displays, they differ slightly and nearly share the same name. These two smartphones are expected to be Xiaomi's top sellers in 2024. Let's explore what distinguishes the Redmi Note 13 Pro from the Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus to help you decide which one to purchase. Let's get to it. First up is the design. We're looking at a somewhat different appearance between these two models. So you'll notice that fingerprints are visible on the back of the smartphone, but it's not really an issue. The Xiaomi Redmi Note 13 Pro will have sharper edges, while the edges here are rounded. Overall, I find it slightly more angular here, especially around the screen due to its flat design. The Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus also features a more angular screen, while we have a curved screen here. It all comes down to personal preference. Personally, I like both. Uh, the curved screen adds a bit more immersion. By the way, I don't know if you like it, let me know in the comments. But I'm also quite a fan of the flat screen. I like both, so it's hard for me to choose between them on that. You'll notice that the edges are still relatively thin on both sides. Xiaomi did a good job on that, so that works for me too. There's a difference in design. Of course, these smartphones come in various colors. But beyond that, there's really a consistency you'll find with the Note 13 Pro. While the Plus will have a slightly shinier, more matte look, even though in both cases, they're still glossy. The Pro will be a bit lighter than the Pro Plus, 6.6 .6 ounces versus 7.2 ounces. It's almost the same weight. In both cases, you get a fingerprint sensor for very easy unlocking. It's convenient, it's fast. In both cases, you have Corning Gorilla Glass Victus on the front, so it's extremely durable. And you have exactly the same screen, which is a 6.67 inch AMOLED panel that goes up to 120 Hertz refresh rate. So you choose either you keep it at 120 Hertz all the time, which will use more power, or you set it to 60 Hertz, or you leave it on automatic mode. It's probably best to let it choose automatically. And here, Xiaomi is announcing a peak brightness of 1800 nits. Always more 1800 nits is huge. Of course, 1800 nits when you're in full sunlight, why not? But it's gonna drain your battery, which isn't great. However, what we take away from this is that we have a bright screen. You can crank it up to the max if you want. I wouldn't recommend it. Just keep it a bit below the maximum. That'll be really, really good for your smartphone's battery life. But what I like here is that we've got an AMOLED screen, and AMOLED means OLED technology with deep blacks, infinite contrast, and when you have a black pixel, it's a turned off pixel, which means it won't use power, and that's once again good for your smartphone's battery life. But Xiaomi doesn't stop there. They've worked on a bunch of technologies they've had certified to ensure once more that your smartphone won't harm your eyes. Look, you go into your settings, we'll go to display, and you'll see something I've activated. It's the reading mode, I recommend you turn it on. Your reading mode, what does it do? It tints your smartphone screen a bit more yellow, which is definitely better for the comfort of your eyes. Then, what I recommend is setting it to the circadian cycle option. That means it'll sync with your natural circadian rhythm, a bit wider in the morning, a bit more yellow in the evening. You can set it to classic and choose your color temperature. Personally, I leave it on automatic and it suits me just fine. They've also worked on making it flicker free so that when you dim your smartphone's brightness, you won't get that flickering effect. It's not visible to your eyes, completely imperceptible, but it's a kind of shimmer that can really tire your eyes out. Similarly, you'll have 1920 Hz PWM dimming. Loaded with technologies designed to prevent eye strain, it also emits less blue light. In short, there are quite a few little things that are good from a technological standpoint that Xiaomi has thought of. And that, to me, seems pretty standard today. On the audio side, it's interesting. There's a difference between these two smartphones, namely that, of course, you have stereo speakers on one side and on the other, with an inevitable asymmetry since your main speaker will be the right speaker and the left speaker will be there for support as reinforcement. It's not magic. We're discussing a mid-range smartphone, so nothing extraordinary. What's intriguing is that with the Pro model, not the Plus, you get a headphone jack. So if you have wired headphones, you can plug them in. However, the Pro Plus lacks a headphone jack, likely due to space constraints. This trend of removing headphone jacks from high-end models is becoming common among manufacturers. It may be disappointing, but that's the current trend. Keep in mind, there's a distinction to note. Bluetooth 5.2, Bluetooth 5.3, Dolby Atmos. In short, they've done their homework with the audio, and that's a good thing. It brings us to an extremely important point, which is multimedia. Since we're dealing with large 6.67 inch AMOLED screens, these displays are fully optimized for watching movies and series. With the 120 hertz for gaming, it's a very versatile smartphone for all things multimedia and gaming. For everyday use, there's no problem at all. Now, there's another point that interests us. Look, it's happening right here. The discussion revolves around performance and battery life, which are intricately connected. The Pro model boasts a Snapdragon, referred to as Snap 7S Gen 2. Meanwhile, the other option offers MediaTek with a Dimensity 7200 Ultra chipset. In both instances, we have 5G processors etched at 4 nanometer. 
Interestingly, the Pro model is expected to be less potent than the Pro Plus model, with Antutu scores of 601,789 and 738,492 respectively. Starting the test simultaneously, it's evident that the Pro Plus outpaces the Pro, advancing swiftly. And you can see that the Pro isn't lagging behind, but it's a lot less efficient. There's a real difference here, and it's not necessarily obvious in terms of usage because both are suitable and responsive. But still, the Snapdragon 7S Gen 2 will be less efficient than the MediaTek Dimensity 7200 Ultra. On top of that, there's another thing that really changes the performance. There's the processor, but it's not just the processor. You're also going to have the RAM technologies. In both cases, you have either 8 or 12 GB of RAM. However, the technologies are not the same. On the Pro side, you have LPDDR4X which is generally pretty good, but for the Pro Plus, they've gone much further with LPDDR5. This will allow for a faster smartphone, but it will also help improve battery life. That, that's an extremely important point. Another really cool thing is that in both cases, you get either 256 or 512 gig of storage. Right here, just there, uh, 256, 512. And once again, we're not dealing with the same technologies. You've got UFS 2.2 on the Pro model, while on the Pro Plus, you have UFS 3.1 which will be faster in terms of read and write speeds and will also contribute to your smartphone's battery life. And that's just as important. So whether it's the processors, the RAM, the ROM, it's inevitably going to affect the battery life, performance and overall experience. And another interesting point is that you have here a 5100 mAh battery. On the other side, a 5000 mAh battery. It's the same thing. Overall, the battery life is good. A day, a day and a half, it'll depend on you. But the really interesting thing and what fewer and fewer manufacturers are doing today is including chargers. And that to me is also super important because with the Pro model, you get a 67 watt charger, which is really quite impressive. And with the Pro Plus model, if you look inside the box, you've got a 120 watt charger. And that's very, very cool because you can charge it up to 100% in just 19 minutes with 120 watts. So it's extremely fast. That means on either side, you're getting fast charging. 67, 120 watts in both cases, it's gonna be super quick. And there's another thing that's really cool. Uh, what Xiaomi did here is they thought, okay, it's great to have fast charging, it's great for it to be quick, but we don't want to damage the battery. We don't want the charge to be too fast and potentially harm your smartphone's battery. So they did something pretty smart with the battery options. You can dig into the settings. You can speed up charging by connecting the provided charger to boost charging when the screen is off. So we can further optimize charging here. Battery saver, if you want, we can save battery life. Ultra battery saver, when you're really low on battery, you press it and then you're set for 80 hours. No worries but we're not gonna do that because it's really not the best experience for us here. So, you see, you only have three apps available to make calls. We could add another one here, but we're not gonna get very far with that. Okay, we'll leave that. Then you come here and choose like balanced mode, performance mode, battery saver mode. Basically, you set the slider wherever you want. You're thinking, I know I can charge later today. No problem, I want performance, I wanna play games, I want it to be fast. Of course, this is within what your processor, your RAM and your ROM can handle. I want maximum performance, but if I know I can't charge it until tonight or tomorrow, what I do is I say no, no. I want security, I prioritize battery life. So I move the slider towards more battery life to ensure I have a battery that lasts as long as possible. So they've done some pretty interesting work from a software perspective as well. Today it's Maya UI 14. We're not on HyperOS yet. The new experience that's going to expand more and more, which I think we'll see on these Redmi Note 13 Pro or Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus, but as it stands, the software is quite successful and pretty interesting, knowing that if your storage isn't full, you have 12 GB of virtual RAM that will make your smartphone a bit more powerful, just a bit more. All that's interesting, but what I'm really into is the camera part. And you'll see that in photography, it's really the same thing. You get the same setup, a 200 megapixel wide angle lens with pixel binning technology. You're combining 16 pixels to create one big pixel. It's good for low light photography. It's good for getting a bit more detail. It's quite interesting. I like it. They're mainly announcing a 4X lossless zoom here. Let's take a look. Then you have an eight megapixel ultra wide lens. Sure, why not? And you have macro here, right there. You see two megapixel macro. Well, overall, I'm not interested at all. Don't forget the selfie cameras. They're hidden right here. 16 megapixel selfie cameras. You can obviously record up to 4K at 30 frames per second. Now, should you record with this smartphone? I'm not convinced. Camera section, I've got my ultra wide angle right here. What they tell me at Xiaomi is that I'm going to have, so I see this, it's a 200 megapixel sensor, so I'll zoom into the sensor. They claim a 4X lossless quality because I'm actually zooming into the 200 megapixel sensor. And then I can zoom up to 10X, that's the maximum. You can see the stabilization isn't bad. I have a central tremor, so it's actually not too bad. It works. Of course, the selfie camera that's right here, it seems to work well. This is, uh, 
uh, and then I have a variety of modes available, including video, 200 megapixel, portrait, night, short film, and some extra options to explore and experiment with. When it comes to photo modes, I'll delve into the camera assistant, macro, AI camera, and various other modes that are great for shooting and having fun with. I'll show you the photo results. Even though we have the same sensor and lens setup, the processors are different. They're not going to process the images in the same way. So look, this is a photo taken with the Redmi Note 13 Pro, and this is one taken with the Pro Plus model. Notice the sky here is more purple, while it's bluer over here. This significant difference in color rendition is also apparent on the building facades. See here it's a bit whiter, here it's a bit more yellow. So there's definitely something a bit different from one model to the other, showing that we have the same lenses. Then we move on to the ultra wide angle. Well, the ultra wide angle is going to be a bit more purplish on the plus model, a bit less on the pro model, which will lean more towards blue. It's also going to be a bit more yellow on the plus model. Then we zoom in 2X. And since we're using the main sensor to zoom into the image on the 200 megapixels, we'll find pretty much the same thing. See in terms of the sky between here and here, whether it's more purplish or not. Now we're on the 4X. They tell me it's a 4X zoom without any loss of quality. Overall, when I look at it like this, it seems pretty good, honestly. Then we go up to X10 zoom, but right away the AI starts to compensate more. Look, there's a lot of noise. It's not great. We'll avoid that. Now I'm backlit. Pro model, Pro Plus model. We immediately see more purple on the Pro Plus. I find it really, really amusing. It struggles with the HDR. The image is overexposed. Here it's a bit clearer, but you can't see anything in front. Well, once again, we're dealing with a mid-range smartphone, so we shouldn't expect it to work wonders here. At 2X, you see at 4 uh, well, it's not good, but that's hardly surprising once again. Moving on here with a bit more greenery. Wide angle at minus one, uh, see the difference. For the photo, I almost preferred the Pro, which I find better than the Pro Plus in terms of detail. I'm not sure it's a bit odd. The ultra wide angle, look, it struggles. Honestly, it really lacks sharpness, but it's an ultra wide angle. Nothing surprising at this price range. Some little salads. We're a bit more saturated on the Pro Plus model. Here, the processor will work a bit harder like this. The exposure will be a bit stronger here than on the Pro model as well. Continuing on here, look, my salads are really very green. There they are less vibrant. A real difference in processors. It's really interesting to look at it like this. Uh, and when we zoom in all the way, in either case, it's not really usable. Uh, you can really see the difference in color and exposure as well, just a bit. It's not extraordinary. We continue here once again. So here the Pro Plus isn't bad. The processor works a bit better because you see, it brings out the shadow areas here around the tree more effectively. That's the dimensity, while the Snapdragon is a bit less so. So the dimensity is indeed superior in terms of processing for these shadow areas and for handling HDR. It's definitely better. Well, the ultra wide angle that I'm switching to is not good on either side. Here we zoom in on the little squirrel box we have here, which is going to be better on the dimensity with the details. That's really where you can see the difference in the processor. It's quite, quite impressive because although, well, you see we quickly reach the maximum. Then we see all these little artifacts that we find here. It struggles a bit, but once again, that's pretty normal given the optics and the processor in the smartphone. It's a mid-range, it's not very high performing either here. Similarly, I might prefer the Pro Plus here after all. Maybe in terms of colors, it's a bit more vibrant, even if it's a bit more purplish overall. And that's a flaw, but once again, it's not a camera phone. It takes pictures, so we can't expect it to be very good. The job is done. It's done correctly. Now, for the selfie camera, I find that the Pro does a little better. It's quite strange with the skin tones. I'm moving to a different angle. Uh, that's pretty good. The Pro Plus looks quite natural in terms of skin tone. The image isn't overly smoothed out. It's actually quite decent. The Pro model is going to struggle more. The Pro Plus will be a bit better. And here we go on a bit more with the sun here. Well, there you have it. It's not great on either side. Here I feel like the Pro handles the HDR better compared to the Pro Plus. But you see, neither is really great, but overall, what we do see is that the Pro Plus is a bit ahead in terms of photography compared to the Pro model. I'll show you some macro, even though I'm not a big fan. This is a macro shot taken with the Pro. I didn't do both because macro is pointless. It's very noisy. It's hard to find the right distance. The quality just isn't there. There's something unnatural about it. Look at that in the back. It's not good at all. But once again, on smartphones like this, manufacturers add a third lens because you've got to have three lenses. But we could really do without this macro because the output is just not great. You can look from every angle. It's full of flaws and I can't recommend it. Really not, uh, both of these smartphones have NFC for contactless payments. So if you use Google Pay, there's no problem. That's still pretty good. There's a difference in certification with the Pro model being IP54 rated. The Pro Plus will have IP68, which is a bit more resistant. Overall, we should avoid throwing them in water and they should be fine. There's also a difference in Wi-Fi technologies. 
On the Pro model, you get Wi-Fi 5, supporting up to Wi-Fi 5. On the Pro Plus model, it supports up to Wi-Fi 6. Both smartphones are available for sale, as expected if you're interested. Find the link in the description for the 8 plus 256 or 12 plus 512 on the Pro model. I'll be at 435s. That's a pretty good rate. And for the 12 256, I'm at 490. That's for the Pro model on one hand, and on the other, for the Pro Plus, I'll naturally be a bit more expensive. I'll be at $469, $90, except right now, as we speak, I'm not sure for how long, but currently on the Xiaomi website, it's a bit cheaper at $429.90. I'll put the links in the description for you. And over here, I'll have it at $499.90. And over here, I've got it for $499.90. Not bad, quite appealing. For the Pro Plus model, Xiaomi is positioning itself against Samsung, against the upcoming Galaxy phones, Galaxy A54, Galaxy A34. That's kind of how we see it and where we place it here. These are interesting smartphones. Why? Not everywhere. These aren't the most high performance smartphones, that's expected. We're in the mid range, so we're not gonna get something that's absolutely extraordinary. What's interesting is the screen quality, which is good and gets the job done. These are smartphones that perform well without overdoing it, but are quite efficient with a good battery life. What's interesting, once again, is the very fast charging you find on the Pro model or the Pro Plus model, either 67W or 120W, but in both cases it's fast and charges quickly, and especially the fact that the chargers are included in the box. So that's also a really great deal, and, and that's interesting. Uh, lots of little extra technologies that Xiaomi is offering us. So you'll see, I'll let you check out the camera features. There are filters and little options, very fun to discover. It's not revolutionary, but it's quite amusing. You can use them, why not? The screen is also pretty well calibrated, and there are quite a few technologies that take care of your eyes, which is nice too. This means these smartphones are honest, well-priced, and I can recommend them to you. Of course, if you're interested, I've put some affiliate links right down in the description. And, by the way, I've been talking about technologies that take care of your eyes. Well, I've actually made a video about that. It's right here. These are the seven mistakes we all make that end up damaging our eyes. Because it's great to have smartphones that take care of our eyes, but if we don't pay attention ourselves, it's not so good. Go check out this video, it'll save your eyes.